Welcome to Pioneers in Payments, where payments experts share their insights. Now, here's our host, Donna Blum. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Pioneers in Payments. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Barry Tooker from TransactionBanker.com. Welcome, Barry. Well, thank you, Donna. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, take part in, in this series. I'm looking forward to it and appreciate the opportunity. Well, I'm so glad that you joined us today. We're looking forward to gleaning some uh, insights from you on what's happening in the payments industry today. Obviously, there is a lot going on, <laughs> a lot of transformation uh, and disruption. Um, so, But before we get into that, why don't you start off by telling our audience a little bit about yourself, your background in the payments industry, and also the work that you do there at TransactionBanker.com. Yeah, well, again, thank you, uh, Donna. Um, yes, um, Barry Tucker, uh, principal at TransactionBanker.com, which is a payments consultancy. My background um, is, is running day-to-day -day payments for many and very different financial institutions um, of all different sizes and shapes, and also working for hardware and software companies and consulting companies, but always in and around domestic and international funds transfer. I've had the opportunity to help with the business and functional design of many of the payments applications that are being used today in the industry. I've also been able to help and assist banks of, again, different sizes and shapes, really tackle some of the issues involving their transformation and modernization projects in and, in and around their payments applications. Um, I've been at this for a number of years. You don't want to say how many. <laughs> I, I recently someone called it decades and I went, OK, I'll agree to that term. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Barry, I think it's important maybe just to note, too, how we met each other. Um, we're both serving on the uh, Faster Payments Council, their new work group that is operational considerations for faster payments. So. Yeah, uh, very definitely. That's where we first met. I also should have added that um, I have the honor and privilege of chairing the Faster Payments Council's cross border payments work group, um, which is, again, looking at things from a different perspective, but really looking forward to working together with the new operational considerations. As am I. Well, again, thank you for joining us. Uh, so these conversations are really to kind of help um, payments professionals navigate the rapidly changing payments landscape. Uh, with so much going on, I think it is very easily uh, easy to become sort of distracted or um, or just even like a deer caught in the headlights. You know, where, where do we go from here? It's just uh, so much happening. It's, it's hard to really uh, focus in on on what the best path forward is. So um, if you were to take a look at all the trends in the payments industry today, what would you say is the most notable trend? I'd have to say the changing bank ecosystem. It's really just, a, it, it's being it's being challenged from a number of different ways. If, if you think about what's going on, I mean, real-time payments has changed the traditional payments processing paradigms. There's new methods of payment. There's new methods of receipt. Now you're going to get into request to pay or request for payment, which changes the way the, the requests are being received. The other thing is the realities of 7 by 24 by 365 payment processing. Everyone, you know, I, I refer to being, you know, around for decades, you know, it was a batch based world. Now it's a real time world. Um, and you have to be able to do things faster than ever before, you know, in milliseconds. And really that that affects the entire end to end workflow. Um, it, it talks, it affects um, all of your um, internal and external stakeholders and parties. It brings up the need for for stand-in processing for when the system when the systems are down, and it really changes the whole way that the business is being conducted. Uh, at, at the same time, you're looking at new currencies. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you, you know, I, I head the cross-border work group. Um, we've been looking at a series of bulletins uh, looking at uh, central bank digital currencies. I mean, there's 114 countries in the world right now that are looking for um, that are looking at CDBCs. 
And that's, that's according to the Atlantic Council. And you take a look again at how that's going to change, uh, potentially change the whole correspondent banking uh, way that uh, transactions go cross border. You take a look on um, the ISO 20022, now been in existence now in many of the market infrastructures for the past two weeks. Um, and now you have to speak a whole new language, all right? You have to, you have to know about PACs and pain and CAM. Uh, you have to understand the new message standards, the mappings, the new fields, the party names, and and the different implementation dates, and you know the realities of all of that. So I, I think that if you take a look and come back to the original question, it's it's the 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 things that have changed is it, it's it's the whole payments ecosystem is changing. And, and all of those traditional things that all of us knew and grew up with and the paradigms are all changing. Yes, uh, there is so much to consider uh, with all of the changes in technology and uh, um, yeah, having moving to that, that 24 by seven by 365 operation, um, just a, a lot, a lot to consider there. So, Barry, let's talk for a moment about what you perceive to be the top opportunity for organizations that process payments today. I think they really have to leverage the technology. Um, they, you know, they, to, to be able to provide faster, more secure, and more efficient payment processing. You have to take a look again at some of the things that are going to impact the industry. The, the realities of digital payments, the the capabilities and potential for artificial intelligence and changing the way that, that things can be done and to understand the patterns and, and be able to recognize the different nuances that are going on again in almost real time. Again, we talked about the, the realities of real-time payments, real-time payments processing, and all of the technologies that you have to be able to, to take into a have to impact with real time payments. At the same time, those technologies are driving the changes in the actual payment day to day payments operations and the business and functional ways that you have to process payments. Lastly, or in addition, is you have now the realities of open banking, which is really going to change the way a customer shares their data and the way a bank has to deal with a customer's request. So who can access that data? Yes, uh, there's just been so much disruption in uh, in the the banking industry in particular, um, and so the way that we've done banking in this country and around the world for the last several decades, that's all changing now. Yes, it yes it is, and it's impacting again all of the stakeholders all of the different steps and stages of, uh, of your workflow process, both on the receive side and on the send side. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, let's shift gears now and let's look at what uh, these payment processing organizations are experiencing as their biggest challenge. I, I, think, it, I think it still comes back to the pace of change. Things are coming faster than, than ever before. And understand the impact to your bank, your financial institutions. I've said throughout my career that all banks do the same thing and nobody does it the same way. So each of these different banks are impacted in a different way based on, based on their clients, based on the way that they do business, based on the geography that they're in and the size and shape of that financial institution. They're really facing a perfect storm. They have all of these different changes that are, that are going on at the same time. And you have to run the bank while you're changing the bank. Um, if, uh, you know, there's, there's an old show called This Old House. You have to live in the house while you're renovating the house. And, you know, that's not, that's not always an easy thing to do. Um, you know, again, we talked a little bit about ISO 20022. There's, there's up to 200 systems that could be affected by, by this ISO 2002 change, change, and not all of the systems speak ISO 2022, or they don't speak the same variant of ISO 2022. And again, you come back to the, 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 the way that the customers um, and real-time payments 
the way that customers have to share and access their data with open banking, the realities of that batch-based legacy systems that are changing that whole, you know, come back to where we where we started with that architecture and that infrastructure that that and and the whole ecosystem is under siege. Um, you also have to think about all of the projects that you are running to keep your bank running in addition to all of these payment changes and system changes and operational changes. It's enough to make one's head spin, right? <laughs> You know, um, in, in a funny kind of a way, I'm kind of glad, you know, I'll probably uh, annoy some people, but I'm really glad I'm not running day-to-day -day operations, and I'm really happy to be on the consulting side, you know, helping the financial institutions understand these impacts and implications. Well, I'm glad you're on that side too, Barry, and now I'm going to ask you to kind of uh, uh, share with our audience some silver bullet piece of advice as a consultant that you have for payments processing organizations? I think the key is staying engaged, understanding those impacts, understanding those implications, staying engaged with organizations like the U.S. Faster Payments Council, like BAFT, the Bankers Association for Finance and Trade, being a member of that FedNow community, and be able to see what's happening. Um, and, and again, you know, really helping to understand the impact and implication to your bank, to your financial institution, to your, to your stakeholders, and more importantly, to your customers. So it, it, in the end, it, it's really, you know, stay, stay engaged, be informed, and more importantly, be prepared. Very good. Well, now, Barry, there's a lot of organizations out there that could use some assistance with navigating um, the changing payments landscape. And if they wanted to reach out to you or learn more about the services that you offer through TransactionBanker.com, how would they go about doing that? Um, take Go out to my website, www.TransactionBanker.com. Um, reach out to me via LinkedIn. Um, it's Barry Tucker, one word, uh, in LinkedIn. Um, and, you know, I'd be happy to help and assist and provide any advice and counsel that, that I can. Great. And why don't we put in a plug, too, for the Faster Payments Council? Uh, if they wanted to learn more about the deliverables that are being, uh, you know, prepared by either of the committees that you serve on, um, where would you refer them? Go to fasterpaymentscouncil.org. Faster um, that that's that's out there. Um, you have an opportunity to take a look at the at the work that the Faster Payments Council is doing. Take a look at the different work groups that are out there. We we mentioned Donna and I mentioned two, but there are many more. Um, uh, you know, there's an API group. There's a financial inclusion group. Um, there's an education and an awareness group. Um, and really staying active. One of the great strengths of the U.S. Faster Payments Council is their diversity of membership. It's not, a, it's banks of all sizes and shapes. It's fintechs, it's corporates. Um, and really, you, you take a look, uh, and that's, of course, the whole, the, we talked about getting into, you know, making sure you're staying engaged with all your stakeholders. An organization like the Faster Payments Council can help you understand those impacts and those changes. Very good. All right. Well, Barry, I just want to thank you so much for your your time today and, and sharing your insights. And I also just want to thanks, thank everybody for watching today. Bye now. Bye now. Take care and thank you for the opportunity.